Hey everybody, Chris from Xano here, and today I just want to give you a quick walkthrough of our new AI assistants. Let's take a look at the Getting Started AI Assistant. You'll see this AI Assistant anytime you go to create a new workspace or you open up a new Xano account. The first question you'll be asked is, what would you like to do? So this is basically your overall use case for working in Xano. We're going to say that we're building an app. And after we do that, we have the option to either create from AI or start from scratch. If we create with AI, this gives us the option to tell the AI the app that we're trying to build, and it will generate a database schema and default CRUD API endpoints for us. So we're going to tell it that we're building a basic Instagram clone, and we'll click Generate Database. So Xano AI will provide you with the initial attempt at generating your database schema. You can review the tables here. And you can also look at some sample records in the spreadsheet view. The AI will also provide suggestions for certain things that you might want to do next. So we can see here that it is suggesting a new table for comments. It's also suggesting functionality for users to be able to follow each other and send direct messages. So we're going to tell it to add that following functionality. And the AI will continually make suggestions and improvements to make sure that your database schema not only meets uh, best practices, but is effective for your use case. Down here, you can choose either a sequential or a UUID type for your record IDs. And if you need to start over, you can do so from right here. This looks good for me, so we'll go ahead and click Create. So here we are in our new workspace, and we can see the database tables that the AI generated for us. Now what I would recommend that you do next is populating your tables with data. We have the option to generate sample data by clicking Generate Records right here. Xana will make an attempt to determine the type of data that should exist in each field, but you can click on each one to change it to something more specific if you need that. You can also choose the number of records to generate here, and when you're ready, just click Generate. So now we have our sample user data, and we can do the same thing for the rest of our tables. After you've generated your initial database, maybe you want to go back and make changes. You can do that by accessing the database assistant. The database assistant is designed to help you add and iterate on your existing database. We're going to ask it to add functionality for users to be able to direct message each other. The database assistant will tell you exactly the steps that it wants to take, and you can approve those steps one at a time. If certain steps require the previous one to be completed, you'll see this message here. So let's first add this direct message table. And then we'll add the index for message retrieval. As you're working through these AI responses, please make sure to rate them so we can continue to improve the functionality. Currently, the database assistant will not ever delete data, so it's perfectly safe for you to use. You don't ever have to worry about anything going away. The next assistant that I want to talk about is the API request assistant. As you're building your application, at a certain point, you're probably going to want to integrate with a third-party service, whether that is Stripe for payments, uh, maybe you need to send emails. For this example, we are going to use the API request assistant to build us an API to get the weather for a specific user. Not really a crucial feature for the app that we're building, but it's a nice to have. So we're going to ask it to build an API request that can get the current weather based on a postal code. We can see it set us up with weatherapi.com here. We can apply the suggestion. For most API requests that you build, you will probably need to replace some of these values. So for example, we would put our API key here and the postal code of the user that we're trying to find the weather for. To do that, you just click here and you can paste your value in right there. So we didn't have to pour through any kind of API documentation or anything like that. We just gave it a prompt and it worked. Now, if the API request assistant is not familiar with the API that you're trying to build with, you can paste the documentation into your prompt and it can reference that. The next assistant that I wanna talk about is our SQL assistant. The SQL Assistant is used alongside our direct database query function, and this can be used to build super complex database queries really quickly. So let's go ahead and try out the SQL Assistant. I'm going to ask it to find me what I would call a high value user. So what does that mean? This is probably a user that is posting a lot, they are commenting a lot, they're following a lot of people, they're doing a lot of direct messages, they're essentially super active all over our platform. Once we have our prompt ready, we'll just click Send. The SQL Assistant will explain the query that it built and how it kind of came to that conclusion. And we can review the SQL here. 
you can also get a preview of the results that it will provide. You can continue to iterate on your prompt as well by continuing the conversation, or if you're happy with the results, just click Use Query and Save. We could, of course, set this up with a query all records function and maybe some aggregates, some add-ons and joins, but this was, of course, a lot faster and gave us a great result. The next assistant that I want to show today is our Lambda assistant. If you're not familiar with Lambda functions in Xano, they give you a way to write JavaScript and TypeScript basically right inside of your function stack, and it can run just like any other function. This opens up a lot of possibility for you to extend the capability beyond what we provide natively in the platform currently. Of course, we know a lot of us are here to work in a more no-code environment, so we provide the Lambda Assistant so you don't actually have to write anything. Our Lambda functions have the ability to import NPM packages, which opens up the entire TypeScript ecosystem to you. You can use this for things like PDF generation, image manipulation, super advanced math or encryption, and more. The Lambda Assistant can find the proper libraries for you to import as well, so you don't even need to know what you need. You can just tell it what you want to do, and it'll do it. So we're going to ask it to create a function that generates a QR code based on a URL, and that's it. We can see it's importing a package here called QR code, which makes sense. It's taking in a URL from our inputs, a couple of lines here to actually generate the QR code, and that's it. We can click use this code and save. So in just a matter of seconds, we used the Lambda Assistant to build a function that is not native to Xano using an NPM package without having to write a single line of code. The possibilities here are really huge. We're always working on improving these and adding new features, so if you have any questions or comments about this, please let us know in the comments below, or you can reach out to us in the Xano community or via support chat. Make sure as you use the assistance to rate your responses so we can continue to improve the functionality, and we really hope you enjoy them. Thanks for watching.